opening and I'm going to do my intro and then we'll start. Okay, I'm going to put it on. You make no friends in the pits and you take no prisoners. One minute you're up half a million in soybeans and the next, boom. Your kids don't go to college and they've repossessed your pantry. Are you with me? The revolution starts now. Starts now. We have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Turn those machines back on! And we have to start by building a wall. A big, beautiful, powerful wall. Go me the money! You are fake news. Oh, good for you. And how was it? I don't know when they decided that they wanted to make a virtue out of selfishness. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. So, we're here yet again, sort of live here in Lake Effect Radio. We're here with Miss BC. How you doing? Hi. Hi, I'm Miss BBC. I am okay. How are you? You know, just living a dream. Get off of work here and slip over to the studio to come and do this. Oh, that's not, that's nice. Like, you know, it's all in the same space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or so somewhat secluded cool. studio right now since, yeah, mostly we're all remote. So. Oh, okay. But, well, sort of start off, we'll sort of start with, so what sort of got you into doing, mu- you know, music, not including from Arashana that she was saying with dancing and all that? Um, I started very young in music and dance. Um, uh, the neighborhood that I grew up in, they had a lot of programs for um, children, like within our neighborhood or um, children with like, um, uh, anger issues or anything like that. So I, I started, um, joining like drill team and cheerleading, uh, which cheerleading had been too much workout for me, but, and I joined, uh, African, um, dance, um, class and I got into some trouble and to get us to work around the trouble, they, we had to be put in a program and the programs were divided into different groups. So I ended up getting choir, which I couldn't stand. (laughs) And, um, that is actually when I started doing my, in school, like my first performances in elementary school. Fair enough. No, I I understand choir. It's, it's that certain cup of tea for some people, but like many, like even yeah. me, that wouldn't be my thing. Yeah, it was different for me because, you know, when you're thinking about choir, you know, you, you know, you're like, okay, I got to be up on stage in an auditorium. But at the same time, it was a lot of like work. We had to read and write and we had to find out about like people in our past and, you know, our ancestors and where certain songs come from and, to um, basically uh, tell our teachers what the song meant. And I didn't like, at that point in my life, I I didn't like doing a lot of participating or speaking out um, publicly. And that was like very scary for me. But I mean, I loved music. I mean, like I was four years old and I would dress up in like my mother's wigs and coats and heels and just like, imitate different things that I saw on television. And so I, I just always, well, most people say I had the flair for yeah. it to, you know, just be into music and to be an entertainer. So I guess it just came um, as naturally as it could, even though I didn't think that I would be um, a, a reggae artist at this point. Uh, I understand. But that's sort of, yeah. is is a perfect sort of lead off of so over the years with going as a reggae artist so Uh who was the one that was the most supportive or helpful along the journey oh um just in family or you could go either way with it um i guess i would say my um like my sisters and my cousins, they were very supportive. Um, my sissy and my daughter, 
Um, she was very supportive of, you know, me getting started and me doing it because, I, you know, I was always just into something, always singing, always, you know, um, promoting. I, you know, I love to promote shows and everything like that. And, um, you know, and it was just like, oh, okay, okay, can I do this? And they were like, no, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. So it's like those people were very supportive. Um, many artists um, were very supportive of me, definitely um, here at Reggae Artists here, John Messenger's reggae band, Carlos Jones. Um, they definitely always vibe me up, you know. And what a lot of people don't know is that it's so much reggae here. Even though we're small, we're very massive. Um, so, you know, um, and I have a lot of family, you know, Milton Blake, J.R. Blessington, um, Sunshade, definitely. He's always pushing me, you know, always. Um, and right now, mm -hmm. my band, my band is my greatest um, influence. They definitely inspire me and push me to, you know, do better each and every day and kind of just like be who I am within the music. So it's a, it's a lot of inspiration overall and all over the world. Um, I work with and speak with a lot of producers and, you know, um, other artists. Uh, a couple of my songs are actually international. So okay. meeting different um, DJs and selectors, like it's, it's it's very inspiring. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, please, who with? Because I didn't know prior to this. So who's everyone in the band? Um, my band consists of um, my my drummer Joshua, mm -hmm. and uh, my keyboardist. Uh, and what actually he's my keyboardist and engineer, and he plays the horn at um, Brian Watson. I have two guitar players, a lead guitar, um, Tom, I call him Tom, by the way, and um, Ross Gatto, and my bass player, Donnie. And um, we we just vibe very strongly. Uh, the energy is very good, and it, it's a balance. Um, it's like everybody has their own level for me you know, that they, how they deal with me. So um, it, it's really, you know, it's just really cool to have. And they all have done music for years. Most of mm -hmm. them, only my bass player, um, he actually just recently got started. But so they, they influence me and give me so much, you know, energy and teach me things that they know. And we kind of learn from each other. Um, they're hard on me too, you know, and I'm a lot to deal with. So, <laughs> so you know, they have to definitely um, help me, you know, with my balance of just being an artist and you like, I'm sensitive about my ish, you know, <laughs> like Erica Badu, but at the same time for me to stay up because, you know, as an artist and a creator, you know, you, you find yourself, and a lot of different levels of emotion. And my greatest thing is to always, you know, uplift and empower and fight for what is right. And my music, I want my music to inspire someone. I, I like the sensuality of it. So yeah, my band is, um, they, they are that for me. Fair enough. No, that's even like my staff and that they, you know, many of them, they would necessarily say occasionally I'm a lot to deal with. They almost, oh, yeah. They call me like almost like the en energizer bunny that I just keep bouncing along through everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely, I bounce around a lot. I get, you know, I get the burst of like, oh, we need to do this or I need to do that or no, I don't want to do this. And, or they'll say, okay, well, this is not going to work. And I'm like, okay, well, I still want to do it. So let's try to find a way to make it work. And, um, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, you know, but I'm glad that they, you know, learn me and get the time to know me to say, okay, B, no, or okay, we can, we're going to try to make this work for you. Let's see how we can work around it. And we're new at learning to write music right now. So um, they put in a lot of time and a lot of energy towards that. And we've come up with a lot of amazing music and just, you know, um, learning, you know, new vibrations. So it, it's really, mm. really awesome. 
and it's good to have like the veterans and the, the legends um, that I can go to and say, hey, how would I make this work? And some people, you know, won't help, but, you know, most of them will. So I feel just blessed to have my band um, because we've been together for a short time, but um, in the short time we have accomplished a lot. Especially nowadays that it's not that mo easy with everything that's going on right now to actually form a band put together, start writing material. Yeah, yeah. And everybody getting together and not, you know, being afraid to get together, you know, that's really, and it, you know, there were no shows going on. There were no yeah. shows, um, no venue, you know, can really book shows now. I mean, if they do, it can't be over 20 people, you know. So yeah. with that being said, you know, you have to take this time to stay busy some way, you know, and, um, for the band, part of my band that we do get together, um, we have, you know, been through a lot of up and downs. I, I, I have to be honest. We have been through a lot of up and downs. Um, it gets very, when you're a musician, when you're anything, whatever you put your energy into, when you're doing that and you can't do that, it takes a toll on you. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of artists internationally and um, locally that are, that have dealt with a lot um, trying to get their music um, or just not being able to do music or not being able to go to the studio or anything like that. So it's been, it's been, um, it's been a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot. Greetings, Michelle. No, I yeah. understand. Like heck, when I started here, did I ever think that I would ever have to worry about running a radio station completely remote. Yeah. What a, if someone would have told me that, like when I s took over running it in te 2010, I wouldn't have believed them. Yeah. No. No, not at all. I would have never believed that we would be going through this um, at at the point in time that it started. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I still didn't believe it when the pandemic, I call it the pandemic, um, when it started, yeah. I did not believe it. I was just like, come on, it's just, you know, we're in America, like it's the States, the t technology is too great. You know, I was just yeah. really pushing that, like, okay, well, let's be like Matrix. Like if, you know, we're in Zion and they're going to take us down, like let them take us down. Um, but I, was, I doubt that that was going to happen and it actually happened. And I was just like, so yeah. that was a lot to deal with. So from there, so if someone hasn't heard your music before, how would you best describe it? How would I best describe my music? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would best describe my music as energy. Um, my music is energy, like um, I speak about upliftment and empowerment. And um, so I think, and, and sensuality. So I feel like it is exactly that, a burst of energy um, that I want, I look and I thrive to give to each and every person that listens to my music. Okay. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. So sort of off of here, I'm always sort of that one bad person necessarily of, I always sort of make musicians always sort of pick their own children. <laughs> so. Okay. Top three songs. Uh -huh. Out of what you're writing right now. Okay. So what do you, so what would be your ones that you would choose? That's my favorite. Yeah. My child. Um, to be honest, why do you hate my black skin? That's my ultimate favorite song because with everything that's going on in the world and especially last year, um, dealing with all the tra tragedies and death and dealing with racism 
every day as the activist. Mm-hmm. When I wrote that song, it was in the heat of everything that was going on. And I started a movement called um, Black Lives Have to Matter for All Lives to Matter. And I'm a strong person. I love everyone. And I, I, it bothers me when people say they don't see color because that's a lie. We, we are all different colors. We're all different nationalities. We're all different energy. And it's what makes the world beautiful. You know, like I love my sisters. I love, I mean, I have my sister um, I named Tiffany. We call each other sisters. And she's a beautiful, beautiful alabaster white. And with she's a redhead. And she's beautiful and amazing. And we bump heads and we love on each other, you know, or whatever. But regardless of the fact, I am a black woman. She's a white woman. And we, you know, we call each other sisters. So mm. it, it doesn't, you know, it, you have to deal with a lot. So when I wrote that song, it was in the heat of all of the tragedy that was going on, all of the brutality. And um, it, I cry every time I sing it. But it, it's empowering, and it's not to belittle or, you know, to trash anybody. It's to bring awareness to what is really going on in the world. And people try to look over it or they don't want to hear it, you know, because it makes them uncomfortable. And it's not just white people don't want to. Black people don't want to either. It's like, oh, I want to deal with it. And you have to deal with it to see, to fix the problem. So that is actually my favorite song. Greetings, Mikey J. Yes. So that's my favorite. That's my favorite child. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. You can't just go yeah. brush it and put it off in the corner and that because it's always still going to be there. Eventually, you got to sort of go and clean out the closet and deal with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's kind of funny, uh, like how you were saying about like international and all that. Is this that a flag uh-huh. or is that a blanket behind you with all the different flags around the world? It is a flag. It's my. This is my studio, actually. Okay. So it's um, it's a flag with all of the different countries and um, places that I have been. I I want to go, or my music play, or you know, people I know. So I I love this flag. Um, I don't know if you can get a good look at it here. If you can see it, good. Yeah. But it is everything, and I hung it in my studio because. It empowers me, um, and it is just a, a very strong statement. So it's one of my favorite flags. But I have flags all through through my house. Um, a brass the flags um, and uh, Jamaican flags or whatever. Or just re, you know resorting to my culture and my energy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but this is one of my favorites. Another yeah. one of my favorite children. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Can you see me well? Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, I have a lot of things going on um, as well as the movie um, Time Matters um, with uh, Mikey J. Um, he's the director and writer of that movie. Um, so it, it's it's like amazing it's taken off so well and it's uh he's been traveling from state to state um doing premieres which this saturday i will be in atlanta for the um premiere um with him and um he's also you know an artist and an activist as well as i so it's it's a lot that goes on with um with my energy i am also an author I have three books, self-published books that are out there on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Nice. So it's definitely. <laughs> yeah, Arishana did have that in the email when she sent that to me. She did not. No. Oh, I think the oh, it's in my bio. I don't know if you uh, received my bio or not. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes, uh, I am a serial entrepreneur. Is what I call myself. <laughs> yeah, fair so enough. Trust me, I studied it. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. That's like one of my one degrees here that I actually got an entrepreneurship degree. So you're speaking to someone that understands that language. 
Yes, definitely. I mean, I think that it's in most of us, um, but, you know, everybody, everybody can't be that person. Like, everybody mm. can't be an entrepreneur. Everybody can't be a radio personality, um, or, you know, everyone can't be, you know, but I feel mm. like whatever it is that you feel you want to do and you think that you should do, you definitely should get out and do it. Try it. Mm. I always say I try everything three times. If I try it and I feel like it's not working or it's not fitting or it doesn't feel good to my, me or my spirit, then I, I just leave it alone. It's left it. And but if I, but if I love it and if I believe in it and I I know that it's for me and I'm not the greatest anything, but I do feel like I'm the most amazing everything. And I feel like just you know, go as hard as you can, work as hard as you can, study as hard as you can. Um, I don't have a degree as an entrepreneur. I started very, very young, um, just selling candy bars, you know, and doing parties when, you know, when my mother wouldn't be home and charging a dollar to get in. So I was in plays and everything at a very young age, um, before I was in junior high school. So, um, like I said, if it's in you and it's supposed to be a part of your life, then it will continue on. And if it's not, then, you know, it doesn't you'll matter. Find your pla- you'll find through your place in the road. Yes. Yes. And it might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. I mean, I know people that are in their 40s and 50s and 60s and they are, you know, 70s and they're just getting started, you know, with creating their dreams or following their dreams or whatever. And I was um, listening to uh, one of my mentors um, the other day and, or today actually. And he was saying, I'm not a nine to five person and I'm not, I'm not a person that can sit at a desk and just sit here and work, you know, for eight hours or whatever and build someone else's business or energy. I am a shaker and a mover I, I need that energy to build for something. I need to give it to someone. I need to share, you know, with someone, you know, many people or, you know, move around. And I, I, I love being the person that I am. Now it's not always easy, you know, um, and it's not, you're not, you don't always, as an entrepreneur, you don't make as much money <laughs> as you put out sometimes. You know, it, it comes along, you know, when it's supposed to, but I would not have it any other way. Yeah, it just takes that time. Yeah, it definitely does. That's definitely like when does. I was in middle school, I started cutting lawns and bought mowers and all that different stuff. Yes, yes. No, I, I get and I it. And it starts very young, too. I don't think that people put that energy in their children as much as they used to. Yeah, that that that's dead on. I I would agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, they're more worried about like yeah. F or their um Xbox um whatever video TikTok. game. Yeah, TikTok. Creating, creating. Yeah, um, I think that technology has definitely taken away a lot of that, and also I don't think parents have that energy. Like you see dad well you know growing up my dad taught and my grandfather like um i knew how to change a tire before i was 15 um and put on a starter on a car um like we knew about cars and weapons you know um because you know my grandfather he was a soldier so as girls he definitely taught us a lot and just growing up and you know with different you know a different culture of parent as well so you know, you don't see parents like taking their kids and, you know, like if they are contractors or, or mechanics or, you know, teaching them how to cut the grass, you see the parents doing that. And I, I find that, you know, they're like, okay, here, get this tablet, get this tablet. We have to stop that. We have to take those things away and, you know, have our, because like what's going to happen when, you know, everybody, you know, they become grown. Are there going to be any more mechanics or contractors or anything like what are, you know, the energy you're putting out. So, um, and a lot of parents are, they don't hold their kids accountable, you know, with 
different things. Like you want to buy, you want a bike? Okay. Well, you need to find out how to make money to buy your bike. If you're getting in trouble, okay, well, you can't have your video game. You know, like hold your kids mm-hmm. accountable. Punishments and discipline is very important. I don't believe in beating on your kid or anything. However, you know, discipline is still important in certain spots and mm-hmm. teaching them um, the truth mm-hmm. about life and teaching them like mm-hmm. their truth. When you get in trouble, when you do something wrong, you do get punished. Um, so I yeah. think that a lot of people um, need to get back into that. You know, a lot of I never see kids cutting grass or doing anything over here. People are hiring people to do that for them. So I, I, no, I commend true. you on that. Yeah. That's like the first thing I ever did when I started, I think it was sixth grade. I still even wow. have it, the little Game Boy color, how they hit that like see-through uh-huh. purple. I still have that. Oh, okay. It's in pretty darn good condition. And that's when oh, those that's were first cool. rolling that's out. Nice. That's nice. Yeah, saving money each and every week to go out and buy that at Kmart. Yeah. And see, that's good. Right. And it, it teaches, like, the value of a dollar. Like, it teaches yeah. that energy, like, okay, this costs this much. And now when you spend your money, you're like, I don't have any more money. You know, yeah. um, I remember I met a friend um, years ago, and she's very, you know, spoiled. She never had to do anything. She never cleaned her own room, never wash the dish and everything. And she did not know that her mom had to pay for like, you know, water and, um, and sewage, you know? And she was like, you know, when she had to, you know, take over like paying bills, she didn't know. And I was like, but see, this is stuff that should be taught. Like you running water, you know, this, is, we have to pay for these bills. Now, I mean, not just taking your bills to your kids. Like you see what I have to pay for you, but teaching them that, you know, because anything can happen. You don't, my biggest thing is I don't want to leave my kid out in the world and something happens to me tomorrow and then she knows nothing, you know, and that's very scary. So I, I it's giving I them a small taste along the road of what the future will hold. Absolutely. 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 Not I, not, Cause everything's not sort of given to you. Yeah. I like many things I like occasionally like when I sort of see like how your people that they don't know anything or they, you know, go around and all that. Life isn't like Burger King. It isn't always gonna give it your way. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't it be so awesome if it did? Like yeah. but no. You're not gonna get it your way at all. Or like at the all. going back and quoting something from years ago. Like the easy buttons from Staples. Hate to say it, those don't work. <laughs> no, and that's not. You cannot restart. You cannot just click a button and then everything will pop up for you. No, it does not work like that at all. And I think a lot of children, you know, believe that because most people today, um, they want to give them their children what they didn't have, or they don't want to discipline yeah. their children because they were disciplined, and. It's always a time and a place and the right way and the wrong way to do something. Mm. But I saw a kid the other day punch his mom in the face, and he was like three. And he punched his mom in the face, and she's like, ah, ha, 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 you know, or whatever. And I was so upset. I was like, that's not funny. And I, I grabbed his hand. I said, no, no, you don't hit mommy. That's not nice. And he started crying. And she was like, he always do that. I said, but, and I got so mad at her, I just, I just lashed out at her. I said, what are you teaching him? You're teaching him to be a woman beater. You're teaching him, you know, that it's okay. And I was so upset. And I, I just went off and I was just like, oh, your ass clad gal. Let me take it. And before I knew it, I had to leave because at the end of the day, I'm like, this is your child. But I, if I wouldn't have said anything, I don't, I think it will still stick with her. Um, she was upset with me and she actually unfollowed me and stopped talking to me. But I, I know that she will speak with me again because the truth is the truth. Do not, you yeah. can't do that. You know, you, anything that you go through in life, mentally, you know, abuse or anything as a parent, before you even have your child, you instill those things in your child. So I really, I always press for people to go to counseling, go to therapy. Um, so, you know, and don't be afraid of the things that, you know, went on when you were younger as far as discipline or whatever. Just find a right way to work because all kids are not the same. 
You can't discipline all kids in the same way. But I just, I definitely want people to understand that whatever you put into your child, whatever you let your child do growing up, you know, that sticks with them. It's just like when they had that rule. Do you remember when they were doing um, everybody's a winner? They're yeah. telling all the children, everybody's a winner. And they're playing basketball and everybody's a winner. Like, no, no, because then they don't know how to lose. Or they don't know how to take when they got a bad grade or whatever. So I don't, I personally don't believe that you should instill those things in children. You know, they have to learn that it's not like Burger King, like you said. It's not like Burger King. You're not going to always have your way. You're not always going to get it your way. Um, and, of course, I mean, we will, we will all love that, but then we'll all be doing something else, you know, yeah. if that was the case. So, it's like one thing I, is I just, we're not – we're human beings. We make mistakes on putting. We sort of learn when things and that – we're not a robot, but, heck, the robots aren't perfect because they break down and we have to fix them, so. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No, I 100%. I, I get it. It's kind of funny, though, actually having someone to actually – notices these things very clearly <laughs> every once in a while like when I, I say that to somebody they're sort of like well I, I don't get it yeah yeah you get a lot of that um i just been teaching myself to not live in denial anymore and um i just i've been really um culture learning and, you know, finding, you know, different people. I just sit down and talk of all um, cultures, all nationalities or whatever. And just, you know, and even myself, I mean, I have lied to myself. I've lied to people. We all lie. But, um, and, you know, it's not that I don't. Like, I probably would, like, lie if the police pulled me over and asked me if I was doing 80. And I'll be like, no, I was doing, you know, 45. It's 45, you know, or something. But um, I try to just not live in the darkness and live in denial um, anymore because it it suffocates us. It, it, it definitely takes away um, just making, you know, for the world, you know, if you, you can't be uh, a radio personality and an artist and you know, work with music, especially reggae music, you know, I mean, and I'm not saying any other music or, you know, some music is just for entertainment. Um, reggae music is, it, it's that, you know, African choir, you know what I'm saying? It teaches yeah. all levels of everything. And I can't have this platform and live in denial, you know, um, and then say, okay, I'm thinking this, but I'm doing this. Um, I can't do that. And, Cause it, first of all, it doesn't feel good to my spirit. Um, and then, you know, I have younger people uh, younger than me watching me and, you know, I, you know, it's, it's just a, mm-hmm. a standard that I feel like I want to be a part. Of. I'm not perfect at all. Trust me. Um, but I am a good person almost every day of my life. Um, and I just, I, I want, I don't want to be perfect. I want people to know my mistakes. I want people to know what I've been through and what I've done but I also want to be able to inspire somebody to say, yes, I was this person, but then one, two, three. And I just try to live my life in, in that movement, you know, as well. And, you know, yeah. I fail a lot. You know, some things make me angry. Like I saw this thing on um, Facebook where the lady in Arkansas, a teacher, she was a white teacher, and she made the little boy, which was a black little boy, clean, um, uh, feces out of the toilet with his bare hands, you know, and it uh. hit me so hard. I was so mad. And I, I reacted in that way because I don't care what color he was or what color she was. That is the most degrading, disgusting thing that you can ever do to any human being. And yeah. as an adult doing that to a child, that's the first thing I saw is that an adult doing this to this child. Um, you know, what effect you're leaving on him. He's never going to really trust another adult again. And how is his mother supposed to deal with that? Now she has to, you know, find ways to help him cope through, you know, and, you know, want to learn to trust another adult, you know, 
So that yeah. was that was one of the ways. I mean, I'm just expressing. I got really angry and I I really lashed out about it because that is a child, a child, innocent child. And I think he wasn't over six years old. You know, so he basically still a baby. You know, um, and that very that upset me. Yeah, so that's I'm not perfect. Horrible. I. Yeah. Crazy thing that happens in life for you. Yeah, it definitely does. But, you know, everything's a learning process and everything is, you know, something for somebody to, you know, say, because at that point now, you know, to be more aware of situations with, you know, whoever, teachers or any anyone um, and what to look for in that energy. And hopefully it teach this teacher something as well, like teach her that I did something so disgusting and, or, you know, you know, not embarrass her, but make her feel bad about what she did. And hopefully she would never want to do anything like that again. You know, Fair, um, yeah. because if, if she doesn't have a child, I'm sure, you know, maybe eventually she would have one and to think I would never want anyone to do this to my child. Yeah. That, that's that's fair. Yeah. But from there, we'll sort of go. So, with being a reggae artist, so you made it as a main mainstream act. So, if you could have anyone perform or open for you, who would it be? Oh, wow. Um, let me see. If I can have any artist in the world, yeah, dead or alive. Um, for, oh, oh my gosh. Um, if I can have any artist dead or alive open for me, who would it be? Buju Banton. I mean, I would love Peter Tosh, but Buju Banton, um, the energy that he brings is so powerful and it's so uplifting that, um, you know, it, it's like you're, you feel like you're almost levitating. For me, that's yeah. how it is. And he has been through a lot and seen a lot. Um, he speaks the truth. And, you know, as a Rasta, you know, um, I, I admire his energy. Um, it's just almost like that father-uncle energy where it's like, I know I would learn something from him and um, it just be very inspiring. Um, and I have many artists that I could, I would choose uh, Tanya Stevens. She's one of my favorite female vocalists. Um, she actually, when I got sick and my daughter played her um, and my earphones, um, it actually helped me to come back um, to being well. Um, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, uh, those, those people, I have, oh God, Dennis Brown, definitely, um, Marcia Griffiths, I, I love them. I have opened up for many artists. Um, I've opened up for Anthony B and Yellow Man and Itana. Uh -huh. um, I've done, you know, uh, vibes with Coco T and um, Freddie McGregor, um, which was super, super awesome. But yeah, it it would definitely be Buju Banton, and he he's not able to come back to the states. So I definitely that would be an honor to be able to bring him back to the states and have him um, open up for me. <laughs> that would be so amazing. And like I said, what I sort of do, I make people think slash. Everyone goes like when I say that one of they think well that should that's backwards. Yeah, and I would. Yeah, it's it's, but it's good though, because you think in this major artist that has been in the industry long before me, and you know, he come up and open for me, you know, oh my gosh, I would, I would definitely probably fly. <laughs> I would definitely just jump so high. I would feel like I had wings. That's a good question. Uh, yeah. Here you go with this one. Of, so you can either produce or play with one artist that inspires you. Who would it be? 
to Manny Marley. Fair enough. Yeah, I definitely, because I, I want to do a song with him. I just like his energy um, and his music. Um, I think he has a different style from any of his brothers um, that do music, and he has a different energy. And I have a song that I just, I wrote, and it's called Mango and Shea Butter. And I can't see anyone else um, featuring on this song with me. And I, I know how like I want it to sound anything like that. So it would definitely be Kamani Marley. Fair enough. So from there, if you could perform any place in the world as a hmm. venue, where would it be? At what location? Oh, anywhere in the world. Um, Africa. I would definitely want to perform in any country in Africa that uh, definitely represents for reggae music, um, but more of either Kenya or Ethiopia. And one mm -hmm. reason in Ethiopia um, is because in Ethiopia, they go by the original calendar. So they're actually seven years behind. And although I don't celebrate age, I just feel like, hey, I will be seven years <laughs> younger. So That's all I was uh, going to ask. Why necessarily? Okay. Yeah. But just, you know, um, I've learned so much. I, I have uh, a few friends that live there and or that are from there. And um, I've spoken with uh, radio artists there. I mean, um, personalities as well. And culture wise, I think that I will learn something from it. Also, um, just the energy. I, I watched the documentary um, of Muhammad Ali and um, a couple of other um, people that actually went and they when they came back with their talent and what they learned when they went to Africa um, it it gave them something they learned something and it made them a different person so I feel like that would happen for me like it would definitely um, and I don't know if it will be good or bad but I just know you know that feeling that they received and what they learned and how they felt, I would definitely want to have that experience. Fair enough. So from there of, so from a year from today, where do you want to see you and your band at? Um, a year from today, I, I don't know. I honestly couldn't predict that. I hope that we are much stronger um, uh, as far as a reggae band and that we have done all that we could to be a part of everything that belongs to us, you know, everything that we deserve um, as a reggae band um, that we, and actually that we travel um that we get to travel and get booked um, in many venues or different places, different cities, different states, and different countries. I know. It, it's sort of wishful thinking, especially right now where we're currently at, yeah. but yeah. got to sort of stay positive just a little. Definitely. If or that, have a little bit of if, hope. If not that, that our music <laughs> definitely continues to play in more countries, in more states, by more selectives and DJs all over the world. And um, that our music inspires at least one person each and every day. Fair, fair. So from there of... So do you have your music out on any different streaming platforms? And, where, and which ones are there? Um, actually, I have them on majority of the platforms um, that are available that I know of. Um, I, I use a, a promoting site that actually links all of your music to different um, platforms. 
iTunes, Spotify, uh, YouTube, Automac, Amazon, um, just to mention a few. And um, so I try to, um, and I, I'm really not as good at, with it as I would like to be, um, because now I, music is about views and likes. So I, I couldn't honestly say I have a lot of views um, as far as now, but I'm working on, because I don't want people to just view my music. I want them to watch and listen to it. You know, I want yeah. them to watch the videos. I want them to listen to it. I want them to put it in their playlist um, or whatever. So um, I'm, I'm just working to get that um, done and processed. Sort of brighten the horizons necessarily. Something like that. Yeah. Some sort of shape of that. Because of, anyone, they can get, you know, listeners. The thing is, when you sort of get the following, when you actually get the other people that are constantly checking or they're shooting to you that Facebook message or on, you know, an email of, hey, you have any news? You know, do you have a single coming yeah, out? Hey, I'm you got an album? Yeah. I'm getting a lot, a lot of that lately where people yeah. are like, hey, here's my email. If you have any new music, send it to me. Um, you have any videos, send them to me. I mean, and it's people I've yeah. never met before, but um, that has either seen someone promote my music or um, just started following my page or something like that. And they feel they want to connect with it. I actually get mm -hmm. more of that from people in different states and different countries than you, I get from <laughs> Cleveland. But they yeah, say a queen is never crowned in her own town. Um, I, I, I used to have a friend that used to say that all the time um, when it comes to um, that part of the music. But when it comes yeah. to shows and all of my fans that follow my show and come and promote me, I definitely have a abundance of support in that. But uh, as far as like uh, radio personalities or selectors or anything like that, I don't get it as much. It doesn't bother yeah. me because I feel like most people feel like it's not what you know or who you know, it's who know you. So, and I'm still growing each and every day. So it will happen when it's supposed to happen. Uh, that That's true. It's true, true. Not including like one thing. <laughs> it sort of leads back necessarily <laughs> of... It leads back of, there's no, it's almost sort of a little bit of a cliche from the one interview I did last night at um, 6, or was it 6 or 7 o'clock, that there's no how-to manual on how to start a band or promote music in the middle of a pandemic. No, there's no how-to. It's like, you just have to jump on something and hope that hope and hope that it works out for you and i hadn't put a song out in a year and i was freaking out about it you know because i saw people like okay well they were putting out music or whatever like that and you, you really can't you can't work on what everybody else is doing but uh, you just have to take from it you know that energy or whatever and i was having some technical difficulties like with music i had purchased or you know, bought from, you know, different um, engineers and then I wanted to buy exclusively and then they wanted to and I would like, okay, sign the contract, but they didn't want to sign the contract or so I had to like dump a couple of songs and it, it was very heavy on me. I actually got really down because I was trying to do everything the right way um, and people work in different ways. Everybody wants a piece of the pie and I also yeah. had someone to try to steal one of my songs and I, you know, had to go to bat for that because they felt they worked, they built the track. And I'm, you know, and I'm like, let's work together. But they wanted like all of these rights and all of this energy. So I dropped that song and it hurt me a lot because my songs, like you said, they're my children. You know, this is a piece of me, the way I, you know, think from my mind and my heart. And um, they were very powerful. And it's like, I think a lot of people are so, when it comes to me, the music industry is very, very, you know, and no matter how genuine you, you want to be and how, you know, you're going to deal with some people that 
you know, and you're going to go through some things as far as music. So, um, like I said, it had been a year and I was like, oh my God, I haven't put a song out in January has been a year. And I was very, you know, uh, all over the place. And I was very upset and I was promoting these songs that were supposed to come out and then end up with that. And then it makes you look like, and everybody's like, okay, where's the song? Where's the song? And I'm like, I was promoting it. Like I was ready. And I had these, uh, difficulties and it was, um, it was very upsetting. It was very upsetting, but you know, we made it through and, you know, came out the other side. (laughs) Right. It doesn't happen, but well, just keep pushing. You can't give up. You can't give up. I have a lot of people that tell me like, Oh my God, you pandemic. Well, and it makes me so guilty sometimes because, um, I do a lot and I move a lot and I help a lot of people. But there are some people that has not pandemic well, and they lost a lot and lost their businesses and homes and things like that. And, um, you know, it, it hurts my heart because it's like, wow, I wish I could have done something to help or whatever, but it was not much anybody can do, you know, just fundraising and things like that. We, we did do a lot of different things for a lot of different people um, uh, under the web. I don't like to promote when I do charity or I do donations um, unless it's a part of one of my events or something. Yeah. But it's still, it's never enough. It's never enough because people this year, people have suffered a lot and people have been through a lot, including myself. And um, I, you know, I would have never imagined this happening, you know, so um, yeah, <laughs> well, that's a lot. It's 100% true, though. Yeah, it's true. It's definitely true. It's sort of surviving, sort of help one another, the weather, the storm that hopefully will be on its way out really, really soon. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, after I'm a hoping. year, it's, it's kind of old. Yeah, yeah. and it's sad that we have had to go through that, but then everyone wants it to move fast too. And I have to be honest, I don't want it to move too fast because I don't Mm -hmm. want it to be like, Oh yeah, everybody's out and we're all doing. And then like, we have this super major setback and then it's worse than what we went through or something. Like I I just want Mm -hmm. people to be, um, aware and more because it's so scary out here. It's so scary. And to be sick during the pandemic was, I, I actually was very sick and I was very scared. And, um, I, I, I wouldn't want anyone to go through that. And if you, people, you know, they lost people and like in a matter of seconds and children and husbands and parents and yes, death happens every day, but it just became like, it's like you were, every time you looked around, it was almost like a scary movie, you know? And, um, yeah. And you were just so aware of death. If you never was aware of death before, you definitely was so aware of suffering and death and poverty, you know? Um, and, racism you know i mean it's so many people's like i've never dealt with racism before i've never seen anything like this before and it's because most of the time we're blinded by it or we didn't want to see it or maybe where you're from it just wasn't happening and it was so in your face because we were still you know and yeah. it was very scary it was definitely very scary yeah that's true but hopefully <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, hopefully it gets better. things get yeah. better. Absolutely. <laughs> At least that's what I keep telling myself each day. I mean, too. Every day, every day I tell myself that. Every time I leave out, every time I have to go to a premiere or anything like that or be around a group of people, um, every time every time I wake up in the morning, I, I definitely pray for that. Well, from that, of so what, how is it? How, what's your writing style necessarily of how you sort of develop your music? Um, I don't write down my music until I'm finished with it. I write, I write in my head and, 
I, I remember being um, with another artist and, you know, they had their notebook and everything and we were working on building a song. And I was just like, okay, and I'm like going through my motion and the artist was like, well, where's your notepad? And I was like, well, they're, they're like, where's your music? And I'm like, in my head. And they're like, well, we just start writing a song. And I, <laughs> I just was like, I, I know. And um, they're like, well, how are you going to remember it? I'm like, I'm going to remember it. And as we were going through it, they couldn't believe that I, you know, was go going through it to remember it. But I never write it down until it's completely finished. And only because you're constantly building. And I'm not a, like, you know, if I'm writing my book, I'm okay. I still write my book down and then put it in the computer. But I'm not like just, okay, yeah, yeah. To me, I'm going to use too much paper if I'm scratching out and going back or whatever. So I started very young writing. I wrote my first poem when I was eight years old, and it just became this technique for me to, you know, um, just start to, like, write it and freestyle and get it, you know, into a vibe. And then once I'm done, write it down on paper. So either if I have background singers or anybody, you know, my band, and somebody needs to, you know, have – my words or whatever, it'll be available um, to them. But I always start off writing um, in a car, especially in, especially if I'm traveling and I'm driving. Uh, I, I just listen to it if I have a track or if I don't. Whatever, if that energy comes, it mm. just pops up in mind and it creates the creates the song. <laughs> And it's enough. awesome. Yeah. But from there, so what would be that one song out of your own work that means the most to you? Um, the one song that means the most to me. Yeah, whether it's, you know, sort of like a person that sort of got you through that rough time in your life. You know, uh, reggae however. woman. Hmm? Reggae woman by popular demand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like the song because it's talking about upliftment and um, you know, um, empowerment. Uh, it exactly who I am. And I don't need anybody to tell me that I'm a reggae woman and that all of my people belong to me. Like I'm, I'm going to try my best to protect and um, uplift every person I come across and inspire and fight for. And I'm not the greatest fighter, but I know how to defend myself. <laughs> yeah. But um, Reggae Woman by Popular Demand is the one song that, yeah, that gives me like the vibe and I don't, it, it's like, and that's the one song I did because at first I had background singers. That was the first song that I did without my background singers and I did not like it. However, it is the one song that travels from state to state and different countries that inspires so many people. And it took me a while to even find the right rhythm for the song and find the right vibe for it. And once I did, there was no stopping me. There was no stopping me. It was just like, oh, my God. When I heard the rhythm, I was like, this is it. And I sung it to it. I never even wrote that song down. I never wrote it down. And I called uh, the studio I was working with at the time was this top of the world studio. And I was like, I have to get this song out. And then, like, I after I heard it, I was like, mm, I want to come back in. And I was, like, bugging him, like, oh, my God, maybe I should change this. Maybe this song, too. Maybe, and I was very... Um, I was so unconfident about yeah. it. And then when people heard it, they just dropped, you know, they just was like, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. And I, I don't know why. And I guess I, because I had been singing with my background singers for long, so long, I think I, I felt like I needed them to be a part of it. But when I mm -hmm. sat down just re um, a few months ago and I was listening to it and I'm like, that's how I feel. That's who I am. That song is me. I wrote it and inspire, um, an, an inspirement of me, you know, inspiration vibe. And, um, 
So, and I have t-shirts and everything, Reggae Woman by Popular Demand t-shirts um, that um, people have purchased all over the world. And that, that's the song, definitely. Fair enough. No, I, I get it. Especially because you're, at first, you were more with the comfort of that you had the background singers sort of backing you up and that, that at first sort of that, it, it just, it goes out like one thing of, it takes things to sort of grow on you to get used to. Yeah. Yeah. Over time. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh. Well, I, I, I was telling it. some people to call in, like if they wanted to call in, you guys do that. Am I correct? Well, that's the one bad thing with the channel I'm sort of doing right now. Oh, okay. That I can't call, but they could chat in though through the live at um oh, yeah. the radio dot org forward slash studio. Okay. Yeah, they could type in questions and that. That's why I've been occasionally looking up at that screen above me and see if people are typing anything in. Okay. Yeah, it was a uh, chat I saw that was down there. I don't know if you... Um, yeah. It was somebody you knew. So... Yeah, but... Yeah, outside of that, I sort of don't have any other questions for you. <laughs> okay. Well, we've actually had a very good interview. I mean, yeah. I appreciate some of your questions. I definitely like when people think off the box and um, uh, make me think off the box when it comes to, especially when it comes to reggae music, um, especially when it comes to uh, just what's going on in everyday life, um, the world, how I feel and what I think, um, because it's not written in stone, but... Um, it gets to help me to deliver who I am and who I want to be and who I thrive to continue to be. Um, and also it lets me get inside your um, mind and your energy to see where you are and what you believe. Um, you don't seem like a person that just was like, oh, okay, I get it. I agree or I don't agree just for anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I don't know you, but I, I like that you think out the box and I, um, uh, have a method of questions to ask. Oh, I'm uh, sure that one, because, I just go with the flow necessarily. Yeah. Then just yeah. sort of listen, especially like me. I, I always sort of been like a music junkie. Okay. You know, okay. school you, band what? in like fifth grade on, really? uh, that was what my junior year was my last year in, um, band. Then I jumped to this. Okay. Oh, that's nice. So, that's yeah. Nice. I wanted to take band because I wanted to play the saxophone or the flute, but I didn't get to take band. Um, my sister did, and she played the flute. She didn't like it, and I loved it. But my favorite instrument is actually the saxophone. <laughs> well, right now I'm taking, well, I've recently been taking guitar lessons, but I really want to learn how to play the bass. So, you know, oh, that's trust a me. for me. Because I did the trombone, then what was it, my sophomore okay. year? That person was graduating yeah. out that was the bass player in jazz band. They went around to mm -hmm. everyone that knew bass club and said, well, anyone interested in playing a bass guitar? It's like, okay, I have in between, you know, the last month and whatever, you know, my sophomore year and over the summer. It's like, yeah, why not, you know? So, yeah, I ended up going that route and learning bass guitar that way. <laughs> oh, that is so amazing. I actually went to a pawn shop. Somebody told me, like, I might be able to find a good bass at a pawn shop, and I saw a couple of them that I really love. Um, I'm still going to stick with the guitar lessons because I just think that, you know, hey, Try it all, you know, and I really love it. I, I can only play one. I could play uh, the major um, scale and uh, one song. Um, uh, what is the name of the song? Oh, my God, it's my favorite. I mean, I actually forget, but it's a uh, um, cheese Louise and Peace. I can't even think of it, but it's, it's 
it's really a nice song and I was happy to be able to play it. I'm not very good at it, but it, it's a fun song to play. And it's sort of that it's developing, very... you know, it's in yeah. development. Yeah. Everyone's got to start someplace. Yeah. So um, you have to start somewhere. And I love it. So um, as soon as I get me a new base, because they are very expensive. As um, soon as I get me a new base, then I'm mm-hmm. definitely going to jump on that. But I'm going to continue on with the guitar as well. And it's acoustic guitar. So I think anytime I can just like learn and vibe as a, re- a reggae artist and do acoustic vibes, that's going to be super awesome. Well, that's what we normally like. Let me move this out of the way. Like up here in the studio, like over here. We don't normally okay. always sort of have people come in do acoustic sets or sort of like, like a mini electric sets and that. And yes. yeah, we got a mixer that's hidden over here behind the computer tower, which okay, it's over here that you could actually connect in and all that. Yeah. That's Hopefully, nice. maybe by fall, depending. That would be nice. Yeah. It all depends that stupid COVID thing. Uh, yeah. Um, hopefully one day um, if we can get out and get some things going. Uh, I do have an outside um, show. My bass player, he's giving himself a, a party that people are discussing. Um, but... Other than that, I have we don't have any shows booked, but like I said, we're working on a lot of music and putting in a lot of um, songs out, and you know that's still just as great. I mean, you know, because I love what I do, and I definitely love you know uplifting and inspiring different people. Yeah, when you send over the music, I got to send you because it's actually a few artists they actually do every last. Friday and Saturday of a month, they do a 48-hour music festival. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, you go, okay. it's a Google they form. Huh? Yeah, they stream it. Yeah, off the event page, they go and post. You yeah. start, like, a few minutes prior to your, like, hour, and the admins, they go post it over to the event page and that. I'll just send okay, you the yeah, link definitely. in that. Please, please. I will be so grateful. Not including because they always have, like, earlier in the month, the Google form you fill out and send it through. Some way that you guys could sort of play-ish in the non-normal time. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think that that would be really awesome. I mean, we're doing a lot of writing. And we do a lot of, you know, jam sessions in the studio. So, you know, we could just you know, post that. Um, and hopefully someone can catch a vibes from what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, that would be definitely, I would appreciate that. And would love to pass it on to other um, artists and other reggae artists, especially within the city. That's definitely so. And no, no one typed in any different questions. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any questions? I was asking if anyone had any questions because I'm also on live too. So if okay. you have any questions that you would like to ask me or Jeremiah, please um, text them or post them, and we can ask. Uh, I can read them out loud. Or if you want to go on, um, what is it again? Uh, Lake Effect Radio dot org forward slash studio. Lake Effect Radio? Yep. Studio. Okay. Lake Effect uh, dot Radio org. dot org. Slash yeah. forward dot slash org studio. Slash my studio. Okay. So if you guys have any questions that you would like to um, ask or anything that you would like to know, you can type them right here or you can go on to that link and um, ask. I... I promote it for a lot of people to download the iRadio app, apps and everything like that so that they can tune in. Um, I will answer any questions that you would like. 
Okay. I yeah. Know one's coming up with, but they could be texting. I don't know. I don't know how much time do we have left over. Yeah, as much as what we need. Okay. Okay. Greetings, Carolyn. How are you? Hi, Tom. Hi, Mignette. Um, Curly, Melissa, Mikey J. We have uh, Ross Pablo, which is another um, reggae artist here in Ohio and Cleveland. Um, nice. If anyone have any questions, please um, type them in or please go to the link and we will try our best to answer them for you. But yeah, that sort of life for you right now is because normally back in the day, you always had those people sort of typing in or calling in when people were actually in the studio, which <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> a little more difficult nowadays. Yeah, it is definitely more difficult now. Um, but then, mm -hmm. you know, later on, they'll probably, you know, link in and see what's going on. Uh, okay. Um, I appreciate you all for watching, linking in, for following, for supporting my vibe. And um, just, you know, the energy that you guys give me, it's very, very welcoming. And I hope that you know that. I hope I give that off to you all. And I definitely appreciate you and um, also Arashana um, for um, linking us together. I hope that we get to um, interview soon, definitely meet in person. And um, I cannot wait to send you over the music so you can, you know, see what I have going on. And I don't have anything mm -hmm. else to add. I haven't received mm -hmm. any questions. So, yeah. um, I definitely appreciate you taking the time, not only really her reaching out about you and that. I'm definitely, I'm really interested in hearing your stuff. Yeah, I'm def I'm going to send it over as soon as yeah. we're done here. So so tomorrow, I'll get that over in the rotation. Okay. Then go over, because off our actual website, if you go to lakefactradio.org forward slash local musician... Or musicians. Or slash local musician. It's an actual page. I go and put everyone's like like pages or websites and that. That's okay. all buttons that you could find people and go and click there. And it goes off to their pages. Okay. Okay. It's almost like a mu musical dictionary. Oh, okay. Definitely. I need to go on there. Maybe I can find some people I can link with as well. But the bad thing, it's not actually alphabetized. <laughs> oh, well, I'm used to that. I was working with some people. I had to look up some things, and it was mm -hmm. all over the place. But um, it helped me, too. It's like getting lost. And when you get lost, you kind of find stuff that you never would have looked for anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's pretty much awesome. That's, I, that's how mm -hmm. I feel about music. It's like you might start writing something, um, as an artist and you have an intention for it to be this and you might get something totally different out of it and it's just like yeah, you might start off all over the place and then you find um, the uh, uh, energy that is supposed to you know work that will work for you and you're like hey I would have never wrote this or this is not what I want it to, it to be but you know it comes out really good and then sometimes it comes out bad especially if you rush mm -hmm. it um, learning not to rush has been um, one of my biggest, one of my biggest um, tasks I've been fighting with, learning not to rush. So, yeah, that that is something. Oh, fair But enough. I thank you so I thank much. you also. And, um, I'm going to send that music over to you as soon as I possibly can. And then um, hopefully we can, you know, link back and forth. And if you have any information for me, um, or that you think will help me, or um, I always welcome yeah. those type of vibrations. So definitely yeah. looking forward at sometime in the future actually having you up here when things are I, 
that. I would love that. I know my band would Somewhat definitely normal. love it. They really love it today. Um, so hopefully we can get together soon. If we get together for another um, meeting like this, then we can get everybody on. Yeah, fair enough. Not only I'll add you in the our Rolodex that we email out, our mass email list when we got stuff going on. Okay, <laughs> definitely. So you'll be All in right. the loop. Yes. So do you have anything else or? No. But I do, okay. I do appreciate it. Not really, we'll definitely be linking up here in the near future. Hopefully, Absolutely. maybe more normal circumstances. Definitely. Hopefully. Hopefully. Than right um, now. <laughs> yeah. But this is still good. I mean, yeah. I'm glad that they have these platforms that we could still use. Um, so I still feel, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a motion. It's some type of motion. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Um, Time Matters uh, movie will be in Cleveland on March 27th. Um, you can go on in Eventbrite to um, get the ticket, um, get your ticket. Um, it, I'll send you the link for that as well. Okay. And um, right now it is in Atlanta, um, and it will be in North Carolina after that, I believe. So um, you can follow me. And um, Mikey J for more information. If you have not purchased your chick ticket already, please um, go to Eventbrite, type in Time Matters, and it should show you all the information that you need. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, and if anybody, I'm sorry. Oh, you go. I was saying if anybody wants to follow me, you can find me on Instagram at Miss BBC Official and. Um, on Facebook as Miss BBC Official, also Miss BBC and the Conscious Art Reggae Band. Um, you can find those two sites and also my online store, which is www.body, the number two, bodyempress.com. Um, okay. Yeah, I definitely, I appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day and the, oh. enjoy the weather too. And what um, we have yeah. rest of this week, the weather, too. Yeah, yeah, because you never know what tomorrow it might thunderstorm or have a blizzard or something. We never know. Yeah, they say they're to, dropping uh, a, oh what was it, low 40-something this weekend, yeah. I want to say? Yeah. But yeah. It will oh, be I, definitely. I'm sorry, let me. Um, in Cincinnati, I have been called on Friday to um, uh, give uh, dance hall artist Maka Diamond uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award. So oh, cool. I am stepping out to do that. So if you're in Cincinnati, if you're watching the show, if you're listening to it um, and you want to come out, even if you are not in Cincinnati, if you're in Ohio and you're looking for dance hall vibes, um, uh, please follow my page, and you will find all the information on there as well. Or you can follow follow um, Leah Saho, and she has all of that information as well. Greetings, Amber. How are you, my love? Um, and we are going to definitely have a great time. It's it's really um, a good vibe. So I'm sorry I wanted to mention that. Oh, you're well. all good. All okay. good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Well, I. Have a good okay. week and weekend. Don't do anything well, I wouldn't do, which isn't much. No, I'm about to say, well, no, I'm not going to agree to that. <laughs> uh, I, you know, let's test all the waters. Let's test all the waters and see what happens. I'm about okay. the same way, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you so very much, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, no problem. We'll definitely catch up at another point in time. Yes. All right. Goodbye. Bye.